Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Well, if you're ready to worship, come on and clap those hands and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. I know that just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Anybody ever talk to him? Did he make it all right? All right. to all of you who are present. Our scripture lesson this morning will be coming from the Old Testament, Psalms number 24. And I shall be reading you here in the King, King James Version of Psalms number 54. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. 
who shall extend into the hills of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place. He that has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is a generation of them that seek the Lord, yeah. seek him, and uh, seek his face. Oh, Jacob, so on. Uh, <coughs> lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of glory. So uh, here's of the word, doers of the word. Shall we have a few words of prayer? Our Father, our Lord, our Savior, our Provider, our all in all. We thank you, dear Lord, for watching over us from last Sunday up until this Sunday. You brought us back to the house of worship one more time. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for what, what has transpired on this past week. Yes. That we, your people, did not succumb to the heat. I don't realize and I don't know why it came like it did, dear Lord, but you know. Mm. But in the midst of all the heat, not only here in the state of Mississippi, but in other countries and other, other states, you provided for us and you protected us. Yeah. And we want to say thank you for that, dear Lord. We thank you for watching over us all night long last night. Many swept in a world unknown. As we said our prayers and went to sleep last night, dear Lord, you rocked us to sleep. We didn't know whether we were going to wake up this morning. But you, with a thing of your divine love for mankind, you woke us up this morning. And we want to say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Because you didn't have to do it, but you did. Many who laid their heads on a pillow last night did not rise this morning. It is because of your providence, your care, that that happened. And we want to say thank you for that also. We thank you, dear Lord, for the sick and the shut-in throughout the land and country. Even members of this, this congregation who are in nursing home, carry ins and other places who are at home, we thank you for them also, dear Lord. We ask you, dear Lord, that the, we, we members of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church do not forget those members who are sick and shut-in. That we'll pray for them, visit them, and see about their needs. And we want to say thank you for that too, dear Lord. We have some bereaved families throughout the land and country. Once appointed of the man to die, and after death to judgment, we too, dear Lord, one day must stand before your judgment bar. My God. Mama can't do it, daddy can't do it, sister can't do it, and the pastor can't do it for you. We must stand before your judgment bar. And as we stand, dear Lord, we want to we have given accounts of the deeds done in this body. You said in your word that when an old man can judge you on this side, we can make comments and recommendations. But the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, judge you not that you will be judged. So we 
longer not to judge the Lord. Because as we judge, one day we will have to give an account of that judgment. When the righteous judge to come back and say, well done. Bless this choir this morning that they may sing songs to your glory and righteous name. Hey, now I shouldn't sing to put on a show to prove this unfriendly world. Because if you start putting on a show, we can see right through you. But to give you all the glory and all the praise. We say, remember this congregation who's under my weak voice this morning. We say, every home that is represented. Bless right. those who had a desire to come out to the house of prayer, but just reason unknown to us could not make it. And we want to say thank you for them too, dear Lord. Yeah. We ask you in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, if you look at how much upon all our young people this morning. We're looking for readers of tomorrow, spiritual readers, to take the helm of this church and move it on from one degree of grace to another. Because as time tells us, we are moving on in age. And someone must be here to carry on. We must take them up under our wings and groom them and show them, tell them what thus said to Lord, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you. You're here this morning. I am here this morning not because of who we are. We're here because of the love that God had for us and sent his only son into the world. John 3 tells us in one verse that God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that through him that the world might be saved. You're here this morning, I'm here this morning because Christ died for us. And we should praise him 100%. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Thank you for what you're doing for us right now. Thank you for our breath to talk, eyes to see, hands to feel, ears to hear. You did it. You did it all. And we thank you for it. But one day, dear Lord, we, like many who are going to have to stack arms, as our forefathers say, and stay the war no more. Yes. Can't come to New Jerusalem anymore. Can't meet our sisters and our brothers anymore. We don't know when that day coming, but it was coming to war. And that were in that day, we should have would be many, many years ago, laid a claim to Jesus Christ. Just as old gold miner did in 1849 on the California gold rush, they laid a claim, said, this is mine. I'm claiming Jesus this morning. I don't know about you. So I put a way to claim on it. He's mine. Yes. Only mine. Yes. And you can't take him away from him. He's mine. Yes. He's mine. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.
rising of the sun to the setting of the same the name of our God the name of our Lord is to be praised can I say he's not just he's 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 to be praised but he's worthy uh, to be praised yeah and those of you who are in the building uh, watching later on you ought to be shouting on the sentiment God has been good to me amen can we be honest with ourselves we could have uh, uh, picked anywhere to be today but thank God for the spirit of God uh, that puts on our hearts that on Sunday mornings I'm going to be in the house of the Lord giving him praise can I tell you why because he deserves it everything that we have it is because of him it is in him, Sister Shirley, I move, live, and have my being. Look, let, let's, can we be honest with ourselves? God has looked over all of our faults. Yeah. Amen. And that is plural. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro. God has looked over many of our faults. And he still supplies our needs. My God, my God. Can we, we ready for offering? Ties and offering. Sister Dorothy is coming at this time. Uh, while she's coming, let me make this quick announcement while she's coming. Uh, the Urshers will be in charge of the pastor's anniversary this year, and they will have a, a brunch with the pastor September the 2nd at 10.30 a.m., and the donations are $10.00. Amen. Don't get scared because we said $10. <laughs> Amen. Because we go, we go sit down and eat anywhere else, and it's more than $10. Yeah. And apple juice is not a refill. <laughs> Amen. So... Um, I don't ask for much, amen? I really don't. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Secret in poverty must be. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed.
Let's pray, y'all. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thank you for showing us so much kindness that even as we come confessing our sins, how faithful and just you are to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is our prayer, Lord, that you would create in us a clean heart and renew in us the right spirit. Lord, give us a spirit to know that that when you have done something for us, we ought to spark into worship and spark into praise. That we know that you have looked over all of our faults again and still supplied our needs. So Lord, how we thank you this morning for your grace. How we thank you for your mercy. In fact, Lord, we know it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness, God. Thank you for being faithful to us when often we are not faithful to you. Thank you for loving us when often we don't love nobody else. But Lord, you loved us so much, you demonstrated your love by giving us your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. And he demonstrated his love towards the Father by, by shedding his blood at a hill called Calvary. So Lord, how we pause just to say thank you for the shedded blood, for the redemption uh, of our sins, for the remission of our sins. And then, Lord, we thank you how you have forgiven us, accepted us, adopted us, seated us, and sealed us. Oh, how we love you. Then, Lord, we thank you for this offering. Every person who has purposely given in their hearts, oh God, we pray now that you will multiply some 30, some 60, and even some hundredfold according to our faith. Now, Lord, it is our responsibility. We have the reason, we have the right to lift you up. We have the right, the reason, the responsibility to give you praise again for all the wonderful things you have done. Lord, we know you have been good because every good and every perfect gift comes from above so lord we thank you now then lord we pray now even as we go forward that that our, our, our prepare us a sanctuary to be holy and pure tried in truth that we would lift up our hands in spite of what we're going through we will give you praise in spite of what we've been through lord we will say hallelujah to the lamb of god now lord fall fresh in this place spirit of the living god you are welcome to have your way in this place it is in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit in his name and all them that love the lord won't you shout with me amen amen and thank god look the choir is coming back to bless us with songs to roll out the red carpet let's receive them again by giving them a great God bless you. Come on, choir. Yeah.
passing on by. He say, Lord, lay your hands on me. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you right now. I need you right now. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you right now. I need you right now. Job was sick. Come on.
gospel according to St. Mark chapter 6, the first six verses of that particular chapter. The gospel according to Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Yes, that's, that's not just a song, y'all. That's a testimony. If we're honest with ourselves, we all need the Lord. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Sister Joyce, I've been other places, right at church, and somebody ringtone came on. Yeah, at least it was gospel. Are you here? Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. When you got it, say, I got it. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty work, works are worked by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Hosea and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us and they were offended at him but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and amongst and among his own kin and his own house and he uh, could there do no mighty work save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Pay attention to verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. Verse 6 says, And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. I want to focus on verse 5 really uh, with this subject in mind when Jesus can't heal. That's what I want to talk about today when Jesus can't heal. Over the course of our life, we have accumulated all forms of insurance just in case something happens along our journey called life. Uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we have life insurance, health insurance, car and home insurance. Some of us, depending on where we live, what division we stay in, some of us need flood insurance. Some of us even have content insurance, burial, life, and even cancer insurance. All of these insurance, Sister Johnson, make up a circle of our life. Yet we may have the, the various insurances needed to, uh, in case of difficult time, Everyone does not have them and often suffer because they don't. Can, can, can we be honest with ourselves? It's hard to rebuild a house if you don't have home insurance. It, it is difficult seeing the doctor these days without health insurance. You would get a ticket if you don't have automobile insurance. Just as it is with insurance. 
we need some assurance in this journey called life. And we know we have a blessed assurance through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But just like insurance, everyone does not take advantage of the assurance that rests solely in the Savior. Can, can we be honest with ourselves? We got a lot of stuff wrapped in in insurance, but some of us don't have assurance. And even though we love Jesus, we bless his name for Calvary, and we praise him for blessing beyond measures, not everyone is impressed by Jesus. This is where we really find ourselves in the text. Jesus returned to Nazareth where a year before he had been rejected by the people and evicted from the synagogue. It was certainly an act of grace on his part to give the people another opportunity to hear his word, believe and be saved, and yet their hearts still was hard. This time they did not evict him. They simply did not take him seriously. And can I be honest with uh, ourselves? Because here he is coming back to his town to, 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 for people to be restored. And people are acting like they're acting. And here is what I'm trying to get us to see. We got to see that God often displays his grace in our life when we don't even see it. Can we be honest with ourselves? Sometimes when we are at our worst, God is still at his best. Uh, ain't nobody going to talk to me. I, I, I'm talking about times when we know uh, uh, what we got we did deserve. And, and we know God still opened up the windows of heaven and still poured out blessing. And we know we didn't deserve to be healed. But God still healed our body. We know that God shouldn't have made a way. But God still made a way. Is there anybody in the house beside me? We know what God has done in our life. And we did not deserve it. Can I tell you what that is? That's what grace looks like like God was giving these people another opportunity to understand what grace really looked like and there ought to be some folks in the building say yes I know what grace really looked like because when I got up this morning and looked in the mirror I was looking at a grace case there's some folks in here won't 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 uh, shout on that because here's a re here's a reality you're looking at somebody who is constantly on the potter's wheel uh, and, and God is constantly showing grace because he don't throw me away, but he often breaks me and displays grace in my life. That's God's riches at Christ's expenses. And we ought to be excited about the fact that Jesus displays grace even in this text, that grace is the love of God shown to the unlovely. The peace of God given to the restless and the unmerited favor of God. Can we be honest with ourselves? Grace is free, sovereign, favor to the ill-deserving. Can I be honest with you? What I have, I don't deserve. But what I got, I thank God for what I have. Grace is love that cares and scoops and rescues. Have you ever been like that in that situation where you, it didn't look like you were going to get out? For some reason, grace took care care of it, scoop you out, and then rescue you. Grace is unconditional love towards a, a person who do, does not deserve it. And we ought to be honest with ourselves again, Sister Vera, Sister Vera. Everything that we have, we do not deserve. Are y'all in here? Nonetheless, this is why I want us to see the people were shocked by his preaching. When Jesus began to speak, the people who heard him were astonished. The word uh, astonished means to be seized with panic, to be struck with terror, or to be stricken uh, with startling and sudden alarm. When they heard Jesus, they were actually filled with fear. They immediately began to speak among themselves and talk about three areas of the Lord's ministry that amazed them. Watch this. They talked about his words, his wisdom, and his works. Uh, 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 when, when Jesus preached, y'all, he did so with grace and charm. His words were filled with divine authority. In other words, when Jesus spoke, he did so with the sense that he knew what he was talking about. And can I be honest with us on this Sunday morning, uh, uh, when we get up here, we got to know what we're talking about. 
he left no doubt in the minds of his hearers and his words must either be accepted or rejected. Here's reality, y'all. Either the word of God will drive you uh, uh, away or push you in. And I don't know about you, but it's got to be like that. There's nothing in between. Either you're going to accept what Jesus said or reject what he said. He, he, he left his hearers with no wiggle room. In fact, when some of the officers were sent from the Pharisees to hear what Jesus had to say, they came back and said, never a man speak like this man before. And here's the reality. Jesus has said some stuff that reminds us that he is God wrapped in human flesh. He is the second person of the Trinity. He is our elder brother, our high priest. He is our advocate and our lawyer. When Jesus speaks, y'all, uh, 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 he gets people attention whether they accept it or reject it. And when the people of Nazareth heard Jesus speak, they were shocked. Not only were they shocked with his words, but they were shocked with his wisdom. Again, when Jesus spoke, his words was filled with truth. The people heard him declare old truth and new ways. The Lord's wisdom left them shaking their heads in disbelief. Uh, not only just the works and his wisdom, but they, uh, 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 his words, his, his wisdom, but also his works. Because the Lord's fame had preceded him in Nazareth. They had heard about the miracles he had performed elsewhere. They could not believe that a young man from their own town uh, could do miracles that were accredited to him. Uh, uh, don't that sound like some of us sometimes when folk leave and come back and they're doing great things and we uh, is that such, such and so and so uh, uh, what to call a son and what to call a mom uh, that's how we do that's how we do when we come when folks leave and come back and doing well. Because uh, it's like uh, 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 we can't accept the fact that people do change. In fact, did you not change? Did, not, did, did God not turn you around, pick you up, and put you on solid ground? Did not God pay your bills like he paid other folks' bills? And here's the reality. When folks come back to town and doing good, we ought to have a good report about them. So, so here's what I'm trying to get us to see. There is a sin that goes unnoticed in unrepentance, and that is the sin of unbelief. Uh, I knew it was going to get quiet. The Hebrew writer, writer puts it this way in Hebrews 3 and 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of evil hearts of unbelief and departing from the living God. Can I help somebody out? Because COVID put us in some positions where we found out that many people don't trust God like they said. Are, are y'all here? And, and folks have gone and left because of what they seen instead of who they know. Let me do that again because I'm not so caught up in what I see, but I'm caught up in who I know. All right, let me do that again. Somebody missing me. I, 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 I've seen lightning flash, but I've seen God do something about it. I've seen sickness, but I've seen God heal. I've seen brokenness, and I've seen God mend. Y'all ain't hearing me. I've seen people uh, 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 confused, and I've seen folks' mind be at ease. And we ought to be in the fact that we know that every now and then that God puts something on us to show us where we are and not where he is. So the Israelites could not either uh, uh, enter because of unbelief. They had no sufficient confidence in the divine protection. And here's the reality. Think about this, y'all. Here, here are almost a million people in the wilderness, and God is letting them uh, uh, be who they are, and, and they never change clothes, and their clothes and their shoes never gave out. Are y'all in here? And not only that, but God set it up that in the, in, in the heat of the day, God sent a cloud, a, a, a pillar of cloud, so they can have an air condition. And then at night, that same pillar of cloud turned into a heater. And you can't tell me that when God does all of that for us, and when we get in a little uh, uh, a pandemic or whatever we thought we were in, that we come up with unbelief? Hmm. So when unbe unbelieving messengers made fearful reports, 
the people refused to enter and were condemned to wonder that generation to perish in the wilderness. Can we be honest with ourselves? There was a, a God saying, I'm going to show you how a remnant look because there are some people who have a unbelief. But then there are some people who really trust God. There are some people who have given God their life and it worked out. And sometimes it might not look good. It might not feel good. It might not even taste good. But can I shout this on good authority? It's working out for good. For we know. Are y'all in here? That all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Those that are called according to his purpose. And I'm just convinced. God can take what you got and add what he has and make it better. So, so we don't understand the damage of unbelief. And it has the potential of robbing us of our blessings. Robbing us of our joy. Robbing us of our peace. Robbing us of our steadfastness. Robbing us of some sleepless nights. And robbing us of our relationship with the Lord. The sin of unbelief happens when people refuse to trust God. Uh, I, we do shout that God is our maker and he loves us, so it is clearly uh, a wrong not to tr so it is clearly wrong not to trust him. So some of us look like that that most of the situation we find ourselves in lasts longer because we simply don't believe God will see us through. Can I take those same children, uh, uh, the children that were wandering in the wilderness? It took somewhere from three days to 11 days to get out of the wilderness, and it lasted 40 years. Are y'all in here? So tell me, how is it that a three-day trip can last 40 years? And, and again, y'all, uh, 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 we, we, we got this because we simply sometimes don't believe that God, again, will see us through. So, so we got a lot of saved and sanctified and satisfied saints who suffer simply because they don't trust the Savior. And that's what the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's plural, y'all, because we have been in some places, and God had to get us out. I, 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 let me preach to Sister Joyce Myers. Uh, we, we've said some things, and God had to get us out. Are uh, y'all in here? We, 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 we had some mean faces before, and God had to get us out. Not only were the people shocked by his preaching, but they, were, but they stumbled over his person. Man, I, I like this text. Uh, uh, as the people of Nazareth heard the message Jesus was preaching, they rejected his message because they thought they knew everything uh, 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 there was to know about him. He had grown up amongst them and was one of their own. Watch this. They had seen him play there as a child, they knew his family. They thought that they knew him. They knew that he was never, they, they knew that he had never been to divinity school. They knew that he had no formal training. They knew everything there was to know about Jesus, so they thought. To, uh, to them, Jesus was just another boy from Nazareth. He did not deserve their respect. They saw him as a common man. And that's what they, hey, that's, that's, that's Mary's son. All right. All right. Is, is, is that the boy that grew up in Nazareth uh, 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 making chairs? Is that the boy in Nazareth that got wood and made something out of? He's just the carpenter. Are y'all in here? And here's my question. Uh, if, 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 if your concept of who Jesus is stops with a baby in a manger or a dead man on a cross, you are missing the whole point. Are y'all in here? I, 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 can I do it like this? Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Jesus Christ, born of a virgin woman. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life. Jesus Christ died on a cross at Calvary for the sins of the world. 
Jesus Christ got up on the third day out of the grave. Uh, y'all act like y'all don't know him. Jesus Christ ascended back to heaven, now interceding for us. Jesus Christ coming back again for believers. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. New Jerusalem, don't stumble over his person. Can I tell y'all who he is? Jesus, that's my king. I mean, I heard it. I heard it, Deacon Burton. Uh, uh, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And what? The king of, that's my king. The Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle. That's my king. If there ought to be anybody else in the house beside me, say, that's my king. And we ought to be blessing his holy name. That's my king. The, 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 uh, the people were shocked. By his preaching, and they were and they stumbled by his person, but finally the people were shown by his power. Uh, watch this. The people of Nazareth, like uh, people every, everywhere, took for granted what they had and wanted what they didn't have. Ah. Ah. Uh, let, how can I put this? What you need might pass you by. What you want might make you cry. Do I need to do that again? I, I, I told folks I wanted to be a rapper when I grew up too. They, 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 they treated him again like a common thing. Verse 5 tells us, uh, uh, because of their unbelief, Jesus was uh, unable to perform many miracles there. Uh, the text says only a few folks uh, were healed. Let's, not, let, let's get one thing straight now. Their unbelief did not hinder his power. Are y'all in here? Jesus was and is absolutely sovereign. He could have done anything there, there that he wanted to do. He possessed the power, but he refused to demonstrate his power in the face of deliberate unbelief. Uh, 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 that's what happens sometimes. God is not going to show us his power in unbelief. The hands of Jesus was not tired. A few people came to him in faith, and those people received his help. The rest rejected him and were rejected by him. And that's, that's what we got to see. He still has power. He's still sovereign. That's the same Jesus, uh, 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 Deacon Childs, that was asleep uh, under the boat. And, and a storm came and he went to sleep like a man and woke up like a God. That, that's the same man that when he was asleep, he woke up like a God and he spoke up like a God. Peace be still. Mm. That, 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 that lets me know that he's, he's, he's absolutely man and absolutely God. He, he, he slept like a man, but he act like a God. Is there anybody else in the house know that you have a savior or who is sovereign and he can do what he wants to, when he wants to, to who he wants to, how long he wants to? So when Jesus saw the depth of their rejection, according to verse 6, he marveled at their unbelief. The word marvel means to stand and wonder and amazement. Jesus was amazed that these people had heard the truth, seen the truth, and still turned a deaf ear and a blind eye to that truth. Don't that sound like the world today? Where we could talk about what Jesus did, not, our, not talking about ourselves, but what Jesus did at Calvary and how he shed his blood. And there are some folks still waiting on something else. But here's, here's, here's can I give you this reality? What we need, uh, 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 the liquor stores don't pack it. <laughs> what we need, the mayor can't do it. Can, can I be honest with you? What we need, the, the, the drug pusher can't push it. What we need, uh, 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 Governor Tate Reed show ain't got it. What we need is not in the White House. 
What we need is not in a black house or a crack house. What we need is Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? I said, let me do that again. What we need is Jesus because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, uh, in other words, again, I said this, not only is, uh, does he reveal truth, y'all, he is truth. And when we understand the depths of his truth, then we won't reject the fact that he is the second person of the Trinity. There's a word here for us, church. Can I give you this? Jesus shows up when we meet. <laughs> ah, let me do that again. I, I, we are. This is a meeting. <laughs> and Jesus shows up when we meet. Let, let, let me do that again. We are gathering, and, and I hope you come to lift up his name. And, and Jesus shows up when we meet. Let me do that again. Somebody ain't got it. You, you said it beside some folk who done had some struggles. You said it beside some folk who got an S on their chest, and it's called survival. And Jesus shows up when we meet. Let, let, let me help somebody out. There, there, have been some, there have been some pain in our bodies and, and God done healed us. And when we get here, Jesus shows up when we meet. Ah, I love this type of meeting because when he shows up, I ain't going to say he shows out, but when he shows up, he just shows up. He desires to teach us truth and he wants us, uh, uh, wants us uh, to help us to grow. So if, if we come to the house of the Lord expecting something from God, uh, we will be amazed at what he can do. Uh, have you ever been on a Sunday morning and, and you know, can I be honest? I, I got up burdened this morning. I got up not feeling my best this morning. But then I made my way. I fixed myself up. I shaved. I put some clothes on. I told my wife, I'm out of here. Mary didn't want to come with me. I didn't care, but she's here. Because, can I be honest with you? I came expecting something from the Lord. And I'm just convinced if you come with expectation, now unto him, who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think of according to the, that go that word, power that works in us. And can I be honest with us? Some, uh, Jesus ain't no bigger than what you think he is. Are y'all in here? So I like when Jesus shows up when we meet. But if, if we come with, I've seen it and I've heard it all before attitude, we can't expect nothing from the Lord. Hey, can we be honest with ourselves? Yes, you might have heard this sermon before. Yes, you might have heard somebody else preach it before. But guess what? It's fresh every time it's preached because you ought to get something fresh out of it. I say when you have the expectation and Jesus shows up where we meet. Y'all missing me. Y'all really missing me. I'm, I, I'm not going to holler. I'm almost done. Because when, when we come to church, to the church house, and expect a preacher to preach it down and to work it up. Mm. Ain't nobody saying that now. Because that's what some of you, that's what some of you suggesting anyway. But the fact is, a great worship service demands the participation of both the preacher and the congregation. I, I mean, here's the reality. I, uh, can I tell you why I lift up my hands? Because he woke me up this morning. C can I tell you why I lift up my hands? Because he started me on my way. Can I tell you why I lift up my hands? Because I've seen him do work in my life. Can I tell you why I lift up my hands? I've seen him heal my body. Can I tell you? Why I lift up my hand, I've seen him make a way in my life. Can I tell you why I lift up my hand? I've seen God close doors in my life. Can I tell you why I lift up my hand? I've seen him open doors in my life. Can I tell you why I lift up my hand? He made my enemies my footstool. Can I tell you why I lift up my hand? And they're going to stay there. Because Jesus, that's my king. I'm out of here.
The door of the church is open. Let a Christian experience a candidate for baptism. If you are here, now is the acceptable time to come to the Lord. Hey, y'all, uh, 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 there's, there's some folk, perhaps even in our pews, with the sin of unbelief. Because we've been in some situations that, that, that we declare to ourselves, God can't come through. But then this is what the Bible reminds us. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Can I tell you what that really means? We, we, we can't say we, we looking for healing and say, yes, God is a healer. But then in our mind, he, well, God can't do that. And then guess what? If you believe that's what God can't do, then he can't. And then if you believe that God can heal, then he can. And then when we grow up in the Lord, even when he don't even heal our body, we know that he is able. Are y'all in here? So, so I'm looking at the testimonies of the saint who know that he's able. Because they're either seeing God do it or know he can. Are y'all in here? And then those of you who might not be saved. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it as white as snow. Look at, look at God's grace, y'all. Because none of us deserve heaven. But heaven is what we got. Look at us. None of us. Look, look at us. Look. Let me raise my hand for myself because I know y'all been, been saved since y'all came out the womb. <laughs> Issues I have. Problems I have. Can we be honest with ourselves? We don't treat everybody right all the time. I don't. Sometimes we say stuff that we can't repeat on Sunday morning in a sanctuary. I have. And if you ain't raising your hand, you still do. Let a Christian experience a candidate for baptism. Look, I, I, wrote, I ride around uh, Ruble just like you do. I need the Lord to guide me every day, every day. Lord, as I travel, travel along this narrow way, oh, oh Lord, as affliction presses my soul, I'm determined, I gotta reach my Oh! 
Amen. We see there is none. There's still room at the cross. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Let's not forget uh, August the 12th. It's our choir day, 6 o'clock p.m. That's a Saturday again. And then uh, uh, September, uh, what day was that again? September the 2nd, brunch with the pastor. I'm already excited. Look, I can throw down some food too, y'all. And then, um, let's not forget September the 17th, uh, pastor's anniversary, Reverend Anthony Jones out of Clarksdale, Mississippi, Damascus Missionary Baptist Church will be our guest speaker. Uh, then second Sunday, y'all, check this out, second Sunday in August again, I'll be celebrating 30 years of preaching. Uh, so the Lord has blessed me. He has blessed me, and he's also entrusted me uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, again, those of you who weren't here, on last week, we talked about the fact that uh, uh, for 30 years, I want $30. Just add that on to what you're going to give me in September. Uh, I don't need no frowning, no fussing. Either, you, either you're going to accept it or reject it. Nothing in between. Stand to your feet. Hey, y'all, so grateful to have Sister Sharon with us. Uh, again, God bless you. Uh, if you're here on that, on that day, you need to be here. August the 12th. If you're here on August the 12th, you need to be here. Uh, can I do this trail? Yeah, because we want to do, we're going to do a tribute to your, your mother. You need to be here. All right? During the singing program, we're going to do a tribute to your mother. Uh, that's been in the making. So we're going to, we're going to do that. Uh, okay, okay. We, hey, look, we down with that. Sister Bobby Allen is who you need to see. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but we want to definitely do that. Um, well, that that's, that's a song that she, she would often sing after I finished preaching, uh, especially when we deal with the woman with the issue of blood, He Touched Me. Uh, that, was one, that was one of my favorites from her. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to hear. Our, our, we're going to hear He Touched Me, uh, and we're going to do that tribute to your mother. Let's pray, y'all. How grateful we are, God. Help us in our unbelief. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest root about it, each and every one of us. Until we meet again, let us say it together. Amen. <laughs>